What's going on everybody and welcome to part 11 of our self-driving car scooter thing. So what we're going to be doing now is like we, we, we built the training data, we balanced the training data so our neural network more accurately predicts what we should do correctly. Uh, if we're, At least if we're going to draw an argmax on it and stuff. Anyway, we've, we've, we've built the training data, now we're ready to actually train. Now there are tons of ways and things that we could do here. Obviously, because it's going to be pixel data, we're going to use a convolutional neural network. We have a lot of things, a lot of choices that we could make. I'm going to use AlexNet. Now, I'm not going to write out AlexNet. I'm going to. I've already got it here. Um, first of all, you can you can find it if you just Google. Let's see, TF Learn AlexNet. Here we go. This is probably it. Yes, that's about right. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in. And uh, that way we don't have to actually spend a bunch of time writing it. Although I've, I've made it slight, some slight changes. Um, but anyways, so what I'm going to do is, uh, so you probably should go to the GitHub, not that one. But I'm just saying that's, that's where I found it. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it AlexNet. So it's alexnet.py. We're going to edit that. And I am going to copy, paste. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this. Don't think we need the UTF-8 thing. I'm just going to do this. Cool. So of course, we're not going to be doing this either. Let's just we'll keep the references. We don't need the flower data set. And we don't need this either. OK, cool. Hopefully Alex doesn't sue me. Now, um, I'm sure he's a great guy. So uh, so this is what we're going to be using. Now, for the people or person who's going to be like, ah, copy and paste. Well, like I was saying before, I don't want to have a tutorial on something I've already covered. So if you, if you don't know TF Learn, hey, by all means, learn TF Learn. I have a tutorial on it. I've also got tutorials on TensorFlow. TF Learn sits on top of TensorFlow, so it's probably wise to understand TensorFlow and then get into TF Learn first. Also, um, you can't see it on the screen, but anyway, part of this other part of the series, part of it is a convolutional neural network where you can learn about um, that as well with beautiful pictures. Oh my gosh, these are perfect. And then also how to apply a convolutional neural network in TensorFlow. And then here's TF Learn. And then also, I'm trying to think if we used, there's even a 3D convolutional neural network. Um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about it, I've got tons of tutorials on that. I'm not going to go over it. And I also don't want to type all this out. So you're welcome. Now, uh, yeah, so basically we're importing the two dimensional convolutional layers with max pooling, input data, dropout, regression, and all that fun stuff. So then here are our layers, our input data, width, height, uh, with, okay, we're going to pass that in. So that'll be like, you know, uh, 80, 60. Yeah, so this is slightly changed from the, uh, the other AlexNet. Anyway, quite a few layers here. Um, some of them are, are fairly, like these are pretty small layers, but these, these fully connected layers are pretty large. So if you're having a problem doing any processing, like if you get the whole like, um, I forget what the error looks like, but it's something like couldn't figure out how to, what to do with 00M, <laughs> okay? It ran out of memory. So make these layers smaller. Try to keep these, these are not very large layers. Try to keep them if you can. Um, but yeah, you could make these way smaller. You'd probably get away with 256 or 512 or whatever. I'm gonna keep it this size though. All right, so that's alexnet.py for you. Now what we're going to do is actually build the train model.py. In this one, I'm not going to copy and paste because this one's a little more con uh, like something I haven't covered. So I'm going to copy and paste. Well, <laughs> I'm going to copy and paste to make the new file. Uh, train model.py. Edit that. Clear it out. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to call this one train model.py. And then I'm going to say import numpy as np from alexnet. We're going to import alexnet. Then we're going to set some um, constants, which will be width, which was 80, height was 60, LR for learning rate is 1e negative 3, 
Um, Epochs. <laughs> we ate. Someone got pretty irritated with me for saying epic. Deal with it! I think I'm going to keep saying epics, actually. Eight epics. Model name um, equals pi GTA 5 dash, we'll call it, we'll call it car, just because we might do other things with pi GTA 5. You can call it whatever you want. And then I'm going to have some variables in here. We want to have some variables just because over time we might have epics. Uh, over time we might have, um, we might change various things but we might save the actual model and I'm gonna sh we're gonna be using tensorboard uh, so we can kind of see the progress of the model over time as it trains and so it's easier if you have unique model names also so we can save that model um, just in case we want to revisit it in the future anyway dot format we'll just do a learning rate we'll call this AlexNet and then we'll say epochs epochs Actually, it's a, we'll say AlexNet v2 because it's a slightly modified AlexNet. Now, what we're going to do is model equals AlexNet, which we've imported above, with height, learning rate. Boom! We've got our model. We want to have model for sure in a separate function at least because to train it's not necessary, and, but, but when you save the model, in order to reload a model, you need to have a previously defined model, and those two models must be identical, as far as their like shape. Um, and all a model is when you save it, it just saves the weights of that model. So anyway, that's kind of why we want to separate that out. Anyway, train data equals np load, and we want to load uh, training data underscore v2 numpy. And then we're going to say train equals train data. And we'll say up to, we'll do negative 500. And then test equals train data. Why do I have that space there? Up to, or no, I'm sorry, minus 500 onward. We almost, we almost goofed. Now what we're going to say is we're going to define basically X and Y. X is your feature sets. Y are your labels, your targets, whatever. So X equals np.array. We need to reshape these. Um, this will be I zero with for I in train. So it's just list comprehension. It's the zeroth element. This is the, the image data. So I, I zero is the image data. The pixels I one is the actual output. Um, so the one hot array that says, yeah, go left, straight, or uh, right. Um, and then what we want to do is we need to dot reshape to satisfy things. Negative one by width by height by one because it's grayscale. Now let's go ahead and copy, paste, y, one. Um, and we don't need to reshape. And I, we, we don't even really need the NumPy array, I don't think. I think that'll work. Um, so now what we're going to do is just take this, copy, paste, and we'll say um, test x, test y. Um, and then train becomes test, and that's it. Now what we're going to do is model dot fit and then the first little dictionary here input is capital X the targets are capital Y um, number of epics <laughs> equals epochs now what uh, the validation set will be equal to a new line <laughs> equal to um, let's do I think I'm just gonna we could probably get away I think with just copy this put in parentheses um, paste uh, and then it's test X test Y so this will kind of this is like out of sample testing basically so we can kind of see how how good or bad we're doing comma snapshot step 
will be 500 show metric equals true run ID model name. So we're going to have the run ID basically this is so we when we uh, it'll show up in TensorBoard and all that fancy stuff. Okay, so we'll do that. Also, um, I'm just going to throw in a comment here. Let's say uh, if we were going to run and test with TensorBoard, it would be TensorBoard dash dash. And this is just for Windows, by the way. Logder equals. Normally, you could just say log, but that's not how it works on Windows. You have to do this like foo stuff. Just be, like you have to specify a parameter there. I don't know why, but it's annoying. Users, this is now for me. H, just give the full path. Desktop, uh, pi GTA 5 dash phase 2 dash videos slash log. And um, I'll have to check. Do we, do we properly put I'm pretty sure that was part of the uh, of the AlexNet file, but let me confirm that I put that in AlexNet. So AlexNet model should specify the logger. I'm just going to confirm though. Let me pull it up for you. Yeah, so right here, it's going to store in logger locally, so it should just create a dir here. So, anyways, that's where we can visit TensorBoard when it shows up. I'll show you that in a moment when we go to run this. So now what we're going to do is model, when it's all done fitting, we're going to model that save model name. It will also just automatically save it um, along the way. It should anyway. So, cool. Let's run this, see if things pop up again. Um, I'll probably resize AlexNet if it doesn't fit perfectly and all that, but let me actually start this running before I start yakking. Make sure we don't have errors. It's pretty unlikely we'd get a first pass through. Of course, epochs not defined. Do we define model name before epochs? No, we just said epoch. Because everywhere else we call the epochs, I'm pretty sure. Again. Dude, you're killing me. Fit got unexpected. And epoch. All right, here we go. Here we go. This one's gonna work. Third time's a charm. I can feel it. I can feel it. Let's go. Show me some some blue text. That's what I want to see now. There it is. Some blue text. That's good. It's good. Pull this up now. It's training, and we're off. Okay, um, probably a bad idea to train this in idle. I'm not sure what I want to do about that. <laughs> That's a lot of prints in idle. Ugh. Anyway, okay, so it's training right now. We're on epoch number uno. There's our loss. We want to see that go down over time. Accuracy, we'd like to see that go up over time. Ugh. I kind of want to, I'm just going to stop this. I don't want to do this in, in idle. We want to run this in the command prompt. <laughs> so anyways, let me uh, right click, open command window here. Wait 10 years. It just opened under for some reason. C colon slash Python 35, Python. I have multiple versions of Python installed, so I need to do that. Um, what do we call this? Was it train model? Train model dot pi. Hopefully I did close that other one, right? Yeah, I would get, it would get pretty angry with you. He'd, I'd probably run out of memory if I tried to, to run two AlexNets. Make it a little bigger. Okay, now we're off. Jump to 40% accuracy already. Jeez. Oh. Okay, it's going back down. Okay, now while we wait for that to run, let's go into log. And in fact, let me cancel this. Sorry, I, I just want to make sure log is nice and clean. Okay, one more try. Just because I moved out of idle. Now, while that runs, um, what we want to do, um, there it goes. So it's going to save just a log of information. Now we're going to go back and I'm going to open up the train data, train model. 
And this is my like command, basically. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> this is the command. So I'm going to copy that. Mm, I think you lose your copy whenever you close out idle. I probably lost it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead now. This is still running. I'm going to go ahead and right click open command window here. Actually, you don't have to open it in here because we gave the full path. Once again, it opened under for some reason. Let's see. Can I paste? No. No, you may not. So let's go ahead and reopen train model. Um, whoops. Copy. And paste. Okay. So now we'll run that. That should run TensorBoard, local directory, port 6006 or something. Yep. There it is. So what I can do now is head on over localhost 6006. Here we go, tensor board, and we're off. Looking good, looking good. So what does all this freaking mean? So accuracy, that's how accurate we are. Um, accuracy over raw, I honestly forget what accuracy over raw is. I really don't know. I could, I could guess, but I don't want to. Um, so I'm pretty sure accuracy over raw, I think that's more like the validation set. That's like accuracy compared to the validation set, but I can't remember. Um, anyway, loss, we definitely want to see that go down. And then we've got momentum, loss, and raw. So generally, kind of what you want to see is you want to see accuracy continue going up. You definitely don't want to see it peak and then come back down. Same thing with loss. You don't want to see it go down and then peak and come back up. As long as it's going down over time, that's a good thing. Um, when you have multiple models in your actual log, you'll find them here. Uh, eventually, we will wind up with multiple models of training um, in there. But right now, we just have the one. Um, you can manually refresh by clicking on this. Sure enough, there's an update. Um, or I think it updates itself every like two minutes. Yeah, every 120 seconds, it'll update itself. Um, but anyways, you can just kind of refresh this over time and, and see as things kind of change. Also, this automatically smooths all your lines for you. Um, you can make it super smooth if you want, but you can also see the raw data kind of in the background there. Um, so you could pull it back and it's, that's how messy it actually is, but it kind of smooths it for you if you want that. <clears throat> Um, the other thing is step is, well, I'll show you these probably later on. I'll show you what, what these are just because I, so you might not have already be familiar with TensorBoard, but I'll show you these later. Um, so anyway, I would let this run. It's going to run for eight epics. That might take a while. Let's see where we are. Still on epic one. <laughs> um, anyway, hopefully you're, you're training at least. Hopefully accuracy is slowly going up. Um, on this set. It's a very small data set, so you should be going through epics pretty quick. I'm not quite sure why this is going so slow, to be, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, so um, go ahead and let this train, and then in the next tutorial, um, we'll kind of talk about wh where we are now and probably test the model. I might have other models too, um, and I can't decide. I might, I might upload the model because if you're on a CPU, you should be able to run this model, train the model, but it will take forever. Um, but you can also use the model on your CPU and using the model actually will be, I don't know, I don't know what kind of frame rate you could get using the model, but I may or may not upload these models. Again, this this example is a, the very beginning, so I'm not really sure I wanna upload this data just because I think it's just a waste of space. Like this is just kind of, a testing. If it goes well, we're going to immediately be moving on. So anyway, training seems to be going pretty well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stop it here. We're not going to sit through all of this. So um, in the next tutorial, we'll actually test the output here, see how it does, see if we should even continue on this or if we should just probably stop. Um, hopefully we, we can continue. So anyway, um, that's it for now. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.